I V M. All right, simplified is where they take stories that you can't understand and make it even more difficult to understand. If you need that in your life, it's called marriage. Simplified, three young men with a mission. Their names Chuck, Narain, and Srikant. That's right. Simplify their names first. Simplify, simplify. New episodes out on the IVM podcast website, app, or wherever you get your podcast from. Kripaya, dear Andi ji, the language used on the podcast may not be fit for consumption. We warn you, tread carefully. But listen, yar, don't be so conservative. Okay, uh, time for Cyrus says a show which has won more awards than I can talk about. Uh, primarily because uh, nobody's actually called up to give me one, but then this is not a hint because one can't live off awards. A waste of time. Uh, there's so many of us who've been failures all our lives, and suddenly to get awards at the end of your career, I think that's the worst thing. That's worse, like reverse sarcasm. But let me just quickly uh, mention before I call my wonderful guest, who's got lots to say, and for once a, a voice that has to be heard. Most of our guests don't have to be heard, and they turn up. Um, just want to say, very irritated with South Mumbai cars who are now driving cars and uh, even bikes who normally misbehave on the road. Why is everybody driving like they're in a coma? It's driving me nuts. You know, I'm a very impatient person. In any case, uh, I've got all kinds of issues that I'm dealing with in terms of waiting for people uh, and keeping your guests late is the biggest crime in my book, and I've already cut my finger off in uh, Sharia law that I follow in my own house. However, my appeal to everybody in South Mumbai who I bump into: Can you please drive a little faster? There's nothing much on the road. Why are you driving like you're in a coma? It's a sense of defeatism. Let's move on with our lives here. Enough of this damn lockdown. Go at a normal pace. Just, just get on with it, man. And if you don't have work, do what I have done for twenty-five years. Pretend. Just pretend you're going to work. Do you wish you were smarter? Well, so do we. But the next best thing, we could make you sound smarter. And to help you with this endeavor, we are Simplified, Ooh. a podcast uh, that attempts to break down the complex world around you with a uh, little knowledge, a lot of poor jokes, and a ton of random trivia. Episodes out every Monday on the IVM podcast app or wherever you get your podcasts. See ya. All right, uh, let's meet our guest. On side, it says, "Gives me a great pleasure to call on." Parmesh Shahani, who's written a book called Queeristan, which I will—I don't know if you'll ever get to see this on video. Here it is, and I was lucky enough to get this book free. Oh wow! So that's two copies. That's not bad. That's more than I did with my book. Um, and I'll quickly, obviously, it's all about the LGBTQ movement, but I'm sure there's more to talk about than just uh, his crusade, LGBTQ inclusion in the Indian workplace. Because Parmesh, you are a regular, um, well, corporate head honcho, aren't you? It's written here somewhere that you you're one of the biggest names in Godrej. You own more shares in the Godrej family, and um, so you're talking from the point of view of being in the corporate line, also being a, a gay man in a 2000s 2000 to 2020, I presume, uh, which is the time where all these things have happened and changes happen. Uh, again, I'm saying this from my side. But before I welcome you, Parmesh, can I can I say something? Yeah. Oh, sorry. I've not done all the talking, so I mean, that's just, <laughs> what a stupid thing to say. Uh, you know, but I just want to say, I'm sure you're sick of the neoliberals also who come out and say, you know, uh, we are very pro-gay rights and we have this thing and we have that thing. I think that it's just stupid that someone has to actually say that. Why do you have to go and say that? I mean, just a normal human being should not have a problem with somebody else's sexuality. It just makes no sense to me that people have to go out of their way to say it. It's almost like they need to say it to convince themselves that it's true. And I don't know if you think in those terms, but it irritates me when people say that. The same thing with race or anything else. When people go out of their way to make a point, I'm like, why do you have to say it? This is just a normal, uh, logical, uh, normal. It's not even compassion. You're just being normal sensitive. I'm not even saying being super sensitive. It's just normal sensitivity to anybody around you. So that's one thing I would love to discuss with you. The second thing I want to put out there in my long monologue, which is now half the show, which means your footage will be not required. Uh, Paramesh is um, that you know uh, we all have our own issues. Yeah. I don't think that just because someone like me who's never had issues with people being gay or straight, it just doesn't bother me, or caste, or class, or color. These things don't bother me. But I have other bad issues. I can't stand people who drive slowly. I can't stand people who go for walks. I don't understand the point. It's a paradox for me. It's not exercise. It's a joke. I see this old lady walking the terrace every day at six in the morning. It drives me nuts. Slowly, pointlessly, futile walk. You know. So why I don't have issues with all these mainstream issues and never will because it's just not the way I think. I do have issues. So I think all human beings suck. 
we're all chutes, if I may use the word. And let's face it, if you don't have mainstream issues like uh, anti-gay and anti-this and anti-that, you'll find something else which irritates you. That's the way the world is. That's I think my the piece. answer, Cyrus, the answer to all your questions and all your issues are going to be found here. <laughs> yes. Not that we are plugging anything. Parvesh, I'm going to keep quiet. I'm going to let you talk, Parvesh, because this is your show and we love exploring the minds of people who bring so many different things to the table. And by that, again, I don't mean the talk of sexuality, but much more than that. Uh, let's start with uh, Parvesh. Why the book? Why Queeristan? So it's exactly for what you said. But first of all, I'm not a normal, regular corporate head on show. I don't think a corporate head on show would wear this fabulous silk kurta in the morning and accessorize with just the right necklace. So it's lockdown, I mean, Baba. It's lockdown. As long as you yeah, put the head eye, you yeah, get the job. All the, <laughs> all the head honchos I meet are still wearing their plain, boring blue shirts. Or um, if they're not, if they're artistic types like you, like green t-shirts. So... <laughs> My secret is the same shirt every day and I'm not in the army or a watchman. But I try to wear the same thing as long as I can. In yeah. that sense, the gay community will not take to me, I have to tell you. I'm not known for my... No, 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 we are very inclusive. And, and that's yeah. the reason why, uh, this book comes from that spirit of being inclusive. So why I wrote this book was going back to what you said earlier. There have been so many changes that have taken place in the past 20 years itself. In, if you look at the law, right, we've yo-yoed. In 2009, we had an incredible Delhi High Court judgment that was pro-LGBTQ. 2013, the Supreme Court went back. 2018, we have a pro-LGBTQ judgment again. In the middle of that, there's the Nalsa judgment of 2014 for trans rights. So legally, all these things were happening. But what I noticed around me in the corporate world, which is where I'm based, is that while the law was taking its own course, the real change was coming about all about us, right? In the workplaces like mine at Godridge. In cinema, in media, right? You have films like Ik Ladki Ko Dekha, Shub Mangal Sabdhan, or, you know, films like Muthan, so many incredible films across languages, Marathi, Malayalam, so on. In people's mm-hmm. homes, you have more and more families talking about acceptance. So society was changing. So I wrote this book from my vantage point in the corporate world because I really believe that, you know, companies where you work can have a huge influence in making you feel comfortable and then you can actually take that confidence back home and change society, but also to record all these incredible changes that were happening all around us. So It's, just, it's a bit like Black Lives Matter in a sense that uh, while you have statues and laws and you can have, uh, you know, vigils and people with candles and all that, and it's great. Uh, the reality for you or for anybody in a situation is what happens on a day-to-day basis, right? Yeah. And uh, I mean, your experiences over the years. So let, let's just go back, Parmesh, because now, obviously, like you said, I'm not saying it's all gone. There's enough bias and mad people around. Uh, yeah. And you know, I, I just think that people are bored and that's why they become prejudiced. Prejudice comes from boredom. Uh, yeah. you, you look at Hitler. You know, World War I ended, he had nothing to do. Next thing, oh, God, let's start World War II. I hate yeah. Jews. Yeah, so it's, it's, uh, but that's a, a, leave that aside for a second. Yeah. Just looking at your life on a personal level, before you just take us through the book a little bit, uh, what was the... What was Parmesh's life like maybe uh, when you started 20, 30 years ago? Did you, did you feel there's a change in the reality of the world you exist in? So my life, I have a confession to make, although yeah. you know, um, I, and I'm very closeted about this. It's the only thing oh, you I'm hadn't come out. about now. That I used to live in South Bombay, but I don't tell many people. That's um, worse than, uh, than your sexuality. Never discuss that. What's wrong with you? <laughs> off late, I'm very much a Vikroli vixen. Um, <laughs> Or you sound are, like the family. <laughs> Live in South Bombay, work in Vikroli. Okay. No, it's okay. the off late. I'm very, I'm like a, I'm Diva Vikroli, living in Diva Vikroli. But um, so my life was a very, you know, I used to go to school. I had a very kind of simple, but very protected life. A lot, you know, but as I grew up, as I became many things, including media, including an entrepreneur, started going out. I had the privilege of studying at a, at a place like MIT you know, where I went to do media studies. So my, I was always very comfortable about my sexuality. It was never an issue. And I was very blessed with say supportive parents, friends, etc. But for me, it was a journey of articulation. How do I say it? How do I assert it? How do I take this confidence that I'm feeling because of either my, you know, supportive ecosystem and, you know, education and other privileges because I recognize that there were so many people around me, including my friends, uh, colleagues at different workplaces who were not feeling so comfortable, right? So my journey 
in doing this, the kind of writing, I've, you know, the previous book as well as this is in recognizing that, you know, you have to use your place wherever you are in the world to try and help, you know, create a better place for others using whatever you have. So I have a method in this book that I call Jugar Resistance, uh, which I describe as my philosophy. And I say, wherever you are, you have to find how you can do Jugar. And that itself is a form of resistance, right? So, so can you give us an example? Like I'm based at Godred, right? And I have a position, say, as vice president or whatever. Now, you know, I use, I do whatever I can. So if I have, you know, Nisa, if, if I know Nisa, um, you know, yesterday, Nisa released the book release message. Um, right. That went to thousands of people across her LinkedIn, etc., who may not know me, who may not care about LGBT rights. But because someone like Nisa has said that this book is important, their minds will change, right? If I have access to senior Godrich leaders, okay. I create, um, you know, a leadership forum for all of them. Got it, got it. Change HR policies at Godrich just simply because one can, right? Yeah. And then, you know, so there's many things that all of us have access to. So how can we use our place, our position, our networks to actually... So you're using the system place? instead of blaming it. So sort of use Work the system. Within the system yeah. and bring about change. Nice. And build intersectional networks with multiple systems. May I, may I go off topic here? I yeah. want to uh, brag about doing the same thing in school and college, driving yeah. the pune to get the exam answer sheets, to find out the, the, where the professor lives, those kind of inside information, which That's gives you a important. sort of, yeah. And it so works. I want you guys. Look, yeah. look at where you are now. Yeah. Um, I'm still friends with the pune if that's what you're talking about. Yeah. Sends me a Diwali card every year. Uh, no, so my question, a little more about, uh, did you think that you're, Obviously, now with success and you know, there's a name and I think now it's very uncool to be anti-gay in any way. So a lot of people will just make sure that you don't come across as uncool because nothing is worse than that in the modern yeah. context with the internet uh, looking at your every move. Uh, yeah. But going back for your young Parmesh, did you, did you feel there was a lot of, there was a lot of uh, prejudice in the workplace? Because there for was, you to write this book in a sense, yeah. yeah. I mean, there's been prejudice everywhere. Um, I write about an incident in the book when, you know, I was terribly bullied at my school sports day, I used to be a big Madonna fan. And I used to have these neon green Madonna shorts, of mm. course. Hey, we um, both like Madonna. Did you, right, did you want to be like her? I just want to look at her. Two different right, right. Of yeah. course. I still want to be like her. But, you know, every time I try, she just gets a different body or a younger boyfriend or whatever. Fantastic. Survive so many Fantastic, decades, man. Yeah. 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 Go on. Sorry. I was there. Um, and, you know, I was at my school's function, you know, all these so-called friends thought it was perfectly okay to bully me, to pull my pants down in front of everyone else and to make fun of me because um, they thought, I mean, the word was pansy. Yeah, that was our, that was our generation. That word, was yes. our generation slur, right? Pansy, yeah. sissy, chakka, whatever it is, right? Now, um, I have nothing against those terms, right? But when you are 11 or 12 and trying very hard to be yourself, it can be very, very scarring. So I write in the book about how all these years later, um, because for the past three years, I've been on GQ's best dressed Indian list. So I write in this book about how, you know, I wonder about if any of those bullies who had pulled my pants down at that time, uh, where they might be now. And actually, who cares, right? But so it's been, I mean, everyone who is different in any way, Cyrus, even you must have, I don't think people would have <laughs> understood your sense of humor for so many years. Right? Oh, they still don't. I have no money. Parvesh, what are you saying? Huh. So, yeah. So anyone who is different... At least, in, you know, in India, anywhere in the world goes through this uh, because society really wants you to conform. Um, yeah. And this is why this book is, this book says that celebrate all our differences when you, and it's for companies also, right? Because even companies in general want you to conform. So my experiences in companies as well was, why can't you toe the line? I've written in this book about how when you empower employees to be who they are, you know, they can make you more money. They can make you more innovative. They can make you more relevant. So encouraging people to be themselves instead of doing the line is actually good for everyone. It's good for your employees, but it's also good for you. Also, morality aside, just good man management. Why would you want people to be unhappy at a workplace? How I, don't understand. Really I don't understand. I don't understand. And now yeah. there's data to back it. There's data yeah. to back saying that companies which have employees who are like, you know, more motivated, more accepted, etc. are like five times more likely to be innovative. Or they make so much percent more money or whatever. Because, you know, I work in companies. Uh, I have a humanities degree, but my colleagues have MBAs. 
So yeah. while I can convince you with statements, I need to convince them with PowerPoints and you know pie chart data. Hmm. Correct. Um, and we do, you know, that's the thing. So. Yeah, but you know, I was just thinking, if you take this a little further, I think politicians are the most secular people of all and actually the nicest human beings in the world if you look at it from one angle. Because yeah. if you promise them 50,000 votes, they'll yeah. say, immediately say homosexuality legal, in fact compulsory, whatever you want. So actually, you know, we think about it, the real <laughs> secularism in our country, they don't, yeah. they don't think these things through. It's all about winning or losing for them. Sometimes that's maybe a better way to think. Because, you know, it's- of course, of course. And, you know, queer people are between, you know, four to 10 percent of any population. So four to 10 percent of Indians. are. Yeah, let's, let's, let's take that yeah. further. I, I, you know, I've worked in an acting studio in America and all the people are more yeah. liberal with their sexuality. 50 percent and 50 percent maybe. In no, America. it's not that. There are a lot of men who have dabbled with homosexual relations, but consider themselves to be heterosexual. A couple of my friends have done it, but yeah. uh, and, and are very touchy about it. It takes me back to the bullying. I think a lot of people who are latently gay or mixed feelings, uh, they jump into that almost to, you know, convince themselves they're not because of the conditioning outside that's, uh, you know, yeah. uh, forced yeah. them to think in a certain way. So yeah. perhaps uh, there are a lot more people who are uh, more friendly with their sexuality, shall we put it, uh, than we know. There's obviously those are very clear, either this way or that way. But there are many who are in that gray area. And I think that would help a lot. Also, also. That's fine too, right? I mean, that's what Kinsey said. It's a slight, it's a scale. But I think whatever it is, whatever you feel you are, it's terrible to someone yeah. else who isn't. And in your home, in your workplace, in your school, in your college, that's the whole point, right? Yeah. So this sexual denial has its ramifications later with the person's frustration will come out, maybe beating some driver on the road or something. I don't know. I'm just saying yeah. that it, you're yeah. holding this inside you for so long. Yeah. God, you sound like two old pundits. <laughs> But that's uh-huh. the thing. Everyone hides something about themselves, right? Some people hide their illness. Some people hide that they're divorced. I mean, you know, everyone is hiding. So my whole point is, why don't we create a society in which we can be more open and vulnerable? It's good yeah. for everyone. Yeah. And in the book, I write about how it's really good for business. Because business cares about profit, right? So there's a because, <laughs> yeah. And let's not forget, under Parmesh, there's a Shahani. Uh, I've grown up with many Shahanis. A Correct. very strong Sindhi name. So that business background is in the DNA. Sexuality Correct. this way or that, that doesn't change. So at the point of life, homophobic, be inclusive because it's going to make you money. Baba. You make money for the company, they'll all turn homosexual. That's my belief in life. So business community and political community, while we attack them all the time, they have one good thing you understand is it's all about yeah. the score at the end. If the and score is good, that. the philosophy but, changes. Yeah. And you're seeing politicians speak up more and more. I write in the book about politicians across parties have spoken now. You're seeing political spokespeople. So there's Disha Pinky Sheikh, who is a spokesperson of Prakash Ambedkar's um, Bahujan Banchit Party. There is Apsara Reddy of Congress. She's the she's trans and the head of the Congress of the Mahila Congress of the All India Mahila Congress. You're seeing queer people rise up in political parties. You're seeing uh, queer people would... recognized. Uh, Parmesh, I'll tell you, this is my, my idea here for a second. I don't know if you're going to endorse it. What we are not seeing, and I've said this before, is the big guns who are gay not coming out. You know, the big guns, the really big politicians, there must be some, all right? Uh, yeah. I, I know in the past there were, I, I won't take yeah. their names now because they're dead. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cricketers, you know, or film stars, uh, builders, uh, businessmen, yeah. business families, you, just all the movers and shakers, you know, writers, oh, writers come out actually. Yeah. And what we need are the other guys to come out because if they come yeah, out, yeah. that shame will get, yeah. go from the community that, the, that the, you know, some guys feel. Yeah. Uh, that fear will go. I completely agree. And I've written this book to empower more and more people to come empower, out. And there are book. people. So there's Radhika Piramal. And I actually give that case study in the book. Many companies feel if our CEO comes out, will it affect profits? Will it affect shareholders? But when Radhika came out, we did this exercise. We mapped the share price of VIP industries because Radhika is from the Piramal family right. and she runs right. VIP. The share price went up three times. Three times. Her profits tripled after she came out, right? So there was, in fact, and I argue in the book, although Radhika completely denies it. Radhika says there's no correlation between my coming out as lesbian and VIP doing well. But I argue actually in the data shows there is. Because when a CEO comes out, you're not spending most of your time thinking about hiding yourself. You're spending most of your time on your business. And does it translate into profits? Yes. <laughs> so. And also the perception may not be what they thought it would be. People might actually yeah. admire you. You know, you That's what she found. All yeah. the workers. Yeah. 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 They just respected her. Yeah. Yeah. Ellen took a chance, took a punt. Uh, Ellen DeGeneres when she came out. Uh, uh, yeah. Everybody thought that's the end of her career and, you know, jokes were made and all that. But within four days, she became the new Oprah. Of course, now there are other issues that she's suffering and uh, yeah. might close yeah. down again. Yeah. But that's, yeah. that's another story. 
Yeah, so so you know, the, if the forerunners, if the big legends come out, and we have yeah. some, and I'm sure you know them, because yeah. everybody knows who's in, in the insides of their room in co- private conversation. But for yeah. some sad reason in India, that continues. They don't want to come out, chest out and say, boss, this is what I do, no biggie, let's get on with it. And then the, you know, the next generation will follow happily without thinking. So I think, I, you, will think see, that I think you will see more Should and I? more. I think you will see more and more, Cyrus. Um, you know, books like this, creating an atmosphere... Because I think that's the whole point of the book, right? The law is one thing. But when you see more films being made, when you see people normalizing it, when you see workplaces that make it mandatory for everyone to have partnership benefits or gender affirmation right. surgeries for our trans colleagues or, you know, all-inclusive bath, when that becomes the norm and you are seeing it happening in schools now, you're seeing it happening. More and more people, even at senior levels, will come because people have so much fear. But when we normalize it around ourselves and make inclusion the norm, um, you will see I mean, more and more people. It's a simple. Yeah. Isn't it like brand building? I mean, you take Nike, you put a big star on the Nike campaign, just do it, blah, blah, blah. Before you know it, everybody buys the sneakers. It's the same thing. I like to think of things clinically. In fact, yeah. I'm going to take one for the team. I'll pretend to be gay just to come out there and make some speeches because I like to talk for no reason whatsoever. I've just got emails saying, please don't. The community has enough trouble. We don't want you. F off. Signed, head of community, <laughs> LGBTQ. Um, yeah, I know we, we're laughing about this, but uh, in the theater, we know people who told me horrible stories of the yeah. way they were treated, as you see in, in the fundamental years between, say, yeah. they say between 4 and 11, the personality yeah. is fully developed. And you yeah. can't undo a lot of that. You know, there's a lot of angst, a lot of suffering. Some yeah. people become more compassionate and beautiful human beings because they take the pain and in a positive way, bring it out and don't resent. But, but there are lots of people who are hurt, angry, uh, have pretend lives, you yeah. know, and then their whole life passes them by. It's almost like a, a tragedy for which parents have to take some blame. I mean, who do you blame? Um, I think um, everyone in that sense, you look at the society we live in, you look at the pressures of everyone, straight as well as queer kids, right? Um, I think we live in a society in which we put pressures on, you know, children to be many, many things. I mean, straightness is one thing, but the kind of careers we force our children into the kind of limited visions we give them for their lives. Um, so I certainly think, you know, parents, you know, our colleges and universities, society at large has to rethink about a whole bunch of these things. But the good work is because I'm really focused on the good and what is happening. I am seeing these sparks of change happening everywhere. There are schools right now, like in Delhi, the Core International, which have LGBTQ clubs for their students. What are you seeing? You know, in I didn't know this. Time, yeah, from 8th standard onwards, students, wow. students have their own LGBT associations. They that call man, Kejriwal, I'm a huge fan of that. Yeah. He's and there are so many schools now, yeah, which are being inspired by them to do their own, right? And there are colleges like this in Mumbai itself, which have, um, you know, all gender or gender neutral uh, hostels for gender non-conforming students um, because who may not want to stay in either, you know, the boys hostel or girls hostel. They've created a safe all gender hostel. So many colleges are copying that. Um, there are syllabi. Maharashtra syllabus itself, I think, from last year has changed its syllabus, I think, in, you know, in uh, 10th or 11th standard to, uh, to talk about uh, different kinds of families. So I think there's a lot of change happening. Uh, where, you know, workplaces, so of course, there's so much now, so many workplaces, it's the norm to have a whole range of policies, right? And I think though the, the, the next step is the infrastructure is being put in place, right? Now we have to change values, hearts and minds, right? Because you can have laws, you can have syllabi, you can have rules, you can have facilities. How do we change mindsets? So and that you, happens through culture. Yeah. We will see what you're doing. But so do you think that now the generation, we call it Youngistan. Oh, sorry. My dated generation calls it Youngistan. But it is a millennial. I don't know what to call them. It's worse than millennial now. Yeah. What about that group? Is there more hope for that group? The kids who are, you know, in their teens now at the moment, are they more sensitized? Are they more accepting or are they as bad as Weaver, Pansy, Sissy, all that? No, they are much more. In fact, all my inspiration I take from the next generation because they're not only more hopeful, sensitized, fierce, out and proud, they're also more intersectional. They recognize that the struggle for queer rights is linked to the anti-caste movement, is linked to the struggle for environmental rights, is linked to Black Lives Matter. Because you can't say we want an equal world only for us if it's unequal for you. So, I mean, young India, just like young the world, 
is incredibly sensitive and in fact i draw all my hope and set and uh, you know comfort from that that we kind of and our previous generations have kind of screwed up the world but i'm very hopeful that this fierce young india is going to help make us better you know i saw a t-shirt at an airport before this lockdown guy was wearing it walking for an hour it was just fabulous it said i'm uh, gay black jewish and proud <laughs> it was just fabulous like spot on oh how beautiful is that yeah That's fabulous, you know. I I really brought a smile. I was delayed flight, and I was in a bad mood. As I told you, in the beginning, I have a patience issue, and it really brought a smile to my face. And that, I mean, that's humor at its finest, honestly. And plus, yeah. uh, I mean, you can't even explain it. It's just fabulous in all layers. Uh, yeah. But uh, before we take a break, uh, I want to ask you: give me a list of five people you don't want to be gay. You don't want to ever hear them, hear these guys in your community. Come on, who are the five guys you don't want? I've written a book about inclusion, so I cannot exclude. Ah, oh, you can't have love without hate. You can't have water without the sun. All right, fair enough. Okay, I won't force you. Donald Trump? Would you like him to be straight or a part of the LGBTQ who? movement? Donald Trump. Um, I think Donald Trump uh, can be who he is. I mean, you know, <laughs> uh, I yeah, I personally wouldn't a want others. Yeah, separate species. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He's, uh, but, he's in a category. But you know, it's not that just because you're gay or uh, you know your brother or sister is gay or whatever that you're an extremely sensitive person. I think that also is not a necessary correlation that we make, so, right? Just like there's no coordination that gay people are fabulous or hairdressers or fashionistas. I know gay nuclear engineers, scientists, lawyers. Uh, most gay people I know wear uh, blue pinstripe shirts. The world's shirt. greatest, uh, the world's greatest warrior. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Zandros of Macedonia known to history as Alexander the Great and his love affair with Hephaestion yeah. I mean you can't get better than that um, he never yeah. took a backward yeah. so step I mean, in his yeah. life there's not one yeah. incident of him not being in the front of right flank leading in every single battle yeah so yeah and it's the same for lesbian it's the same for trans you know we come in all shapes forms sizes colors of the rainbow and that's the beauty so i think we also need to unstereotype a lot of these things um uh and yeah, you know as an out of work comedian i think i think uh, the real issue is not that people call you know i would say that if someone is gay and a close friend to you or someone is gujarati or parsi or whatever i should have the right to make fun of them without any malice i think that level of comfort when you reach that that's when people are truly part of a community together you know i can I'm tease you because your dad is bald yeah. you know whatever because we love each other enough to have that you know thing And and comfort comes though when there's structural equality, when it and it, when it works both ways. So I make fun of all my straight colleagues in my office because I know I have an empowering structural framework in which I can. Um, yes. So. No. So you're lucky enough to say that, but I'm saying I, yeah. I find very often that we are stuck where somebody has to mention to us that such a person is gay. Like that label is an important part. Like yeah. you, you know, they never say you know this is Parmesh the writer. Who's uh, you know works at Godrej? He's done whatever. Incidentally, you're gay. Of course, it's a big part of you. I'm not going to say rubbish shit or something. But why yeah. do we always push that in front? Because when that happens, we yeah. start walking on eggshells. You notice that that's the reaction. Oh, yeah. he's gay, so I shouldn't make any remark. Which, if you're not going to relax and be yourself, because everybody has all kinds of mad yeah. thoughts in their head. I yeah. mean, you're doing a disservice. The relationship, I, I think, is not very sincere. Yeah, so, no, I com- I completely agree. But I think the onus here is on organizations to create that comfortable workspace, right? Uh, because the queer person is trying to find themselves and you know navigate. That's that sounds uh, horrible. I'm trying to find yourself. Through, through, <laughs> but, but you know, through uh, through workshops, through culture, create that environment where everyone can be their fabulous selves. Like, and a lot of people forget that you know straight people are fabulous too. Straight people are funny too. Uh, <laughs> yeah. What the hell? You can't take everything. What are we going? Imagine you take the arts. You take a uh, freedom of speech. You take the great writers or, and thinkers and philosophers, and you, what do you leave us? Some bloody industrialist who's building some steel or something. I mean, come on, for God's sake! No, I think probably they're queer. They are queer as well. I think so. Well, <laughs> maybe. Yeah, like I said, I, I just wish one day it doesn't become important to say, "Oh, oh he's black." Okay, so he's black. You know, that, that shouldn't yeah. be the reason why he's in the room. And but yeah. you know, we are what and we are. We are working, yeah. working towards that. We are working towards that, and everything we do helps queer. I, I, Yeah. I personally believe it's got nothing to do with being gay or straight. It's to do with the family. I think all of this comes from that bloody first unit. You know the way yeah. your parents are, the one, the close family relatives, friends who are there in that first yeah. few years. Yeah. If they are hesitant, if they are prejudiced, you know it's difficult to pull it out. Yeah. Then consciously, a lot of people are good human beings and consciously make an effort. But you know they're always play, paying service like that. They're not doing it in a natural way. But so and many like parents now I know, like say my age who have kids, are very you know the way they're raising their kids is amazing. So all their kids. 
um, you know, I'm Parmesh uncle and my partner is, you know, uncle also. And the, it's so normal for them. We have conversations with them, with this one friend's daughter. We had this whole conversation when she was five. And we did this whole uh, Rapunzel, you know, she was like, I like Rapunzel. It's the one with the hair, right? And I yeah. was like, I don't like Rapunzel because she kind of leaves her hair out of a window and waits for a man to like climb up her hair and rescue her. I don't like that. So we together made a new in ending where, you know, she cuts her hair short. And, you know, when a man comes up, she's like, I don't need you. I can do karate and, and rescue myself. But if you want to be my friend, it's okay. And maybe I don't want a prince. Maybe I want a princess. Um, so, you know, I think you're completely right, right? When you have families in which uh, parents encourage their children to just be themselves, um, to not put this pressure on them, kids are kids are amazing. And then they grow I think, up. Really. I hate to correct you, uh, Parmesh, but I think you missed the point of that story. Rapunzel, when it was written in Germany in the 12th century, they had a lockdown. The poor woman couldn't find a hair salon open. She couldn't find a hairdresser. She had to just, what could she do? And they had small houses. You go to Hamburg. Houses are really small. They're like South Mumbai also. And we so didn't have this conversation before the lockdown. So. Oh, damn you. Exposed again. <laughs> Bloody heterosexuals with no talent. All right, we'll take a break. Then we'll come back in a second and uh, discuss more about the life and times of the man who wrote Kueristan, Parmesh Shani. Namaskar. This is Ashish Vidyarthi. Yes, my friend, these are challenging times. But in these challenging times, we can create something extraordinary. Do take time to listen to my podcast, Begin the Journey. Available on the IVM Podcast, website, app, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Remember, we have a great opportunity called life. Cheers. And Parmesh, we're back in a heartbeat. Parmesh's book is Queristan. Um, I think we would call it a, a how-to book. It's, it's a guide. Would you call it a guide? It's everything. It's a full Bollywood masala book. It's got statistics. It's got stories. It's got my life. It's got the life of others. It's Bombay. It's Boston. It's like a full Bollywood book with song and dance routines. But the spine of the book, it's a why book and a how-to book. Now, as we said earlier, I wish we didn't have to say the why. Like, why be inclusive? Because, you know, I have a whole chapter on it's a decent thing to do. In a yeah, time. Really? We need to tell so why people, why not push a person into moving traffic? I mean, it's stupid, really. But we don't live in an ideal world. So I have to say, you know, why it's a decent thing to do and why it makes you more money and all of that. But mainly it's a how-to book. Because every day people say, what do I do? So there's entire chapters on how to change your policies, how to do sensitization, how to think about trans employees, uh, you know, who are special because they have special needs in terms of, say, you know, uh, whether it's, um, you know, affirmation benefits or, you know, washrooms or transportation, etc. in our country. Um, so what's the deal with washrooms? Um, if you're, what, what's the deal there? Because I, I suppose transgender, you, do we need a third toilet? What? So a lot of progressive workplaces are having, you know, all gender washrooms or gender neutral washrooms all over the world, not just in India, simply because, um, if a person is so, that's one. Then that's one. It's all. All can use. Say if you're male and you're transitioning to female, right. when you are in the beginning of the transition process, you may not be comfortable using the female washroom, oh. and your female colleagues might not might not be very welcoming, right? So when people <laughs> are on that spectrum of transition, so mm. it just makes sense to say an all gender and you know uh, washroom, but anyone who is can can use it. And if you think about it. All of the washrooms in our house are all gender, no? I mean, I don't think yes. there's a washroom in our house you have. Yes, one. but the idea of the bathroom, the toilets, especially in our kind of countries, is that uh, men don't know how to behave. Men just don't know how to behave. Hence, we uh, kept them away from women. I remember uh, in the opera when I was drinking, I was not drinking alcohol now. One of my fun things to do back, this is the 90s, is was to go to the female toilet and use the loo. I remember Rahul Bose and I, after one Bombay Times party, decided let's go pee and all that because, you know, and they don't even stop you. <laughs> it's fine. It was so clean and so perfect, you know, compared to the male experience. So, um, I mean, so the reasons are not just to do with the sexuality. It's more to do with the fact that one gender just didn't know how to behave and had no sense of hygiene. Correct. But now that we have separate bathrooms, a lot of companies are, are having, it mean, you know, it can be just a couple of uh, washrooms in your office. Not all have to be all gender. Just both as a mark of respect for your trans employees and colleagues um, and to showcase and to show everyone else, you know, 
this is also what we're doing, right? So a lot of companies are having this. Um, trans people find it very, very uh, useful and supportive because, you know, the bathroom is a very huge um, in terms of just practicality, but also in terms of anxiety, right? Because you want your colleagues to like welcome you in every space and you don't want there to be conflict uh, because the infrastructure isn't there. Likewise, uh, gender affirmation surgery, right? Which is a big thing. Most progressive companies now, including Godridge, your normal health insurance covers gender affirmation. Oh. So you're not saying anything more. Right? For example, you can get a heart attack and use it for a heart attack. You can get it for like anything got else. It, got but it. if you want to use your cover to transition at some point in your life at the workplace, the company will, will support it and the insurer will support you. Is it very expensive? Uh, is it very expensive to transition to go? It depends. It ranges. It's a couple of lakhs depending on what procedures you may choose to uh, follow. But then there is hormone therapy every year. So Godrej and many other progressive companies in India offer up to 60,000 rupees per year. Um, right. So again, these are not much. These are benefits that you would offer anyone, right? So many companies have benefits for maternity leave, for example, right? Six months, for example. So progressive companies, and these are companies in India. This is not some uh, Google and MNC America from or whatever. Yeah. These are the Tatas and the Godridges, which is what's so exciting and which is why this book is so exciting. Who set standards for many other companies as well. Correct. In fact, in India, Godrej, Tata, Lalit Group of Hotels and others have inspired the foreign companies to follow us. So it's Atmanirbhar that we were doing some years ago. <laughs> so, and that's what's actually quite exciting. Yeah. The circle of life. But do you know Ben Shapiro, the slightly right-wing um, commentator in America, is a very glib talker and a lot of the things he says are very enjoyable also. But it has a huge bee in his bonnet when it comes to transgender uh, people. Let me get this right. Not homosexual people, but people who transition. The famous Bruce Jenner who became uh, Caitlyn Jenner, if I remember correctly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the decathlete, Olympic champion. And yeah. uh, who is very touchy about being referred to from the past life. Apparently got physical with somebody on an interview, etc. So, but Ben Shapiro is going on. Uh, and I, I watched this whole thing where he went on saying, uh, if what you are born is what you are. So if you're born male, I will call you, I'll refer to you as he or, you know, male prefix uh, or born female, uh, female prefix. And in, for which he got a lot of flack also. What's your take on that? How do, what do you say to someone like him? I completely disagree. I think, and you know, there's a whole, I mean, there's a whole chapter in the book where I talk about this. I talk about the entire LGBTQ, I, A, H, K, plus, plus alphabet soup. And I take you through each of these terms and why it matters and the value that it has for us. I don't think that gender is something that you're born with. I think gender is a construct. Um, and I think gender is something that you, um, we all are who we imagine ourselves to be, who we feel. It's something that's inherent. And I don't see why in today's world, you know, anyone should stop you from expressing or becoming into the gender that you feel you are. The gender that you were assigned at birth um, is something that was assigned to you by you know, a hospital or by your parents or by people who didn't understand um, your inner landscape. So progressive countries, progressive families, progressive companies, progressive societies all over the world are being more and more evolved and recognizing that, you know, gender is what you feel within you. Um, and there are so many cases, right? And in some cases it comes early. So there are, you know, 9, 10, 11 year olds who feel that they are in the wrong body and they transition with their parents help and support and with the help and support of their schools. In some cases, it comes later on in life in countries like India and all it comes a little later because we, you know, we indoctrinate uh, children into the genders that we assign them so much more. And it takes so much more time to get out and to say, but I don't feel like this. I feel I'm in the wrong body or whatever. Right. Um, so I, I disagree with Ben uh, very uh, respectfully here. Um, just as I would disagree with, say, J.K. Rowling, whom I love as an author, but, you know, who recently... She said a few things, yes. Again, I want to listen to their point of view. I want to understand their point of view because all of this is very new, right? Because this is for a lot of... So, no, so the, the problem with Ben Shapiro was that he would, in the panel, he would refer to the gentleman, oh, sorry, the person who has transitioned yeah. as yeah. male. Because you said you were born male and they, they got to blows in the yeah. end. Because, you know, after that's, violent. Just, that's violent. So that's, I'm, I'm talking about that. I'm, I'm, yeah. Yeah. The view of that person is yeah. you cross the line when you, okay. you're not accepting the view in a sense. You know, you're saying, but you were born male. So for me, I can't understand anything else. You're born male. That's it. That yeah. was his view. I think the simplest thing, and this is what I say in the book, just ask someone. So when I meet someone, I say I'm Parmesh and gay, my pronouns are he, him, right? right. Ask. 
you may say Cyrus, um, you know, I'm pansexual or I'm bi or I'm gender fluid and my pronouns are they. It's as simple as that, right? And we have an equivalent of they in Hindi, it's up. It's very respectful. So they, where does that leave Arnab Goswami? Because he talks in third person. Is that another suit to be explored? Um, I don't know, but we could self, I think, What is self love? What, what is self love? I think the most respectful thing here would be to ask Arnab, right? I mean, that's the thing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Let me speak, Arnab, <laughs> on the subject. All right, uh, we digress. Uh, a couple of things I want to talk about just before we go into the AMAs. Of course, uh, we'll end with the book. Um, when you look at where we are, in 2020, you've yeah. spoken about how they've uh, done this, uh, you know, this, they've gone up and down in parliament a few times. I won't mention parties and all that, but I think more than parties is the seniority in the parties versus the younger ones, which seem to have been the core argument. Right now, are you in a better place as a community? Are we in a better place in the world? I think right now we are in a very interesting place, you know. In every sphere of life, there is great hope and great potential, but also there is... Uh, great violence and discrimination, right? So politically, it's very clear there are progressive states in India and there are non-progressive states. There are states like Kerala. Can we name them? Yeah, Kerala, Chhattisgarh, you know, Tamil Nadu, you know, are all extremely progressive states. Chhattisgarh, for example, the chief minister, Bhupen Bagel, attended a mass trans wedding that gave wow. confidence to the organizers of the queer Chhattisgarh group to organize Raipur Pride, which was... One of the biggest prides in India with a 2.5 kilometer rainbow flag. You know, or he Kerala, could just like he could just like free food because you know I would always put that on as an option. Ah, but it's amazing, party. right? But when you think of when you think of like pride marches in India, we don't think of Raipur. We think no, of Bombay. All. I was stunned uh, when you said Chhattisgarh. I thought you were saying the other way around. The states that are not uh, keen no, on pride. Amazing, now. right? Um, Kerala, for example, constantly honors. There was Adam Harry, the first trans pilot was honored, was given a scholarship by the state and so on, right? So we see more and more, uh, you know, Tamil Nadu has so many schemes for trans people and so on. So we see there are very clearly states, Orissa, for example, is again, super progressive. The chief minister is um, is often, you know, is super progressive again. So we see states which are Maharashtra, the state in which we are in, has recently set up a transgender welfare board, which is very good. Um, Okay. Has appointed Disha Pinky Sheikh and others on it. Um, Okay. Now I want the bad states. So the bad, I mean, they're not bad states. I think they're just, it's, they're just... Maybe, they're in a bad state. Yeah, I would say it's the same, right? Whether it's a Bihar, whether it's a UP, whether it is, you know, uh, so many of the other states which maybe, you know, have not seriously considered their LGBTQ citizens are a resource, can be helped, can be empowered, um, and can actually be, uh, you know, something that they can actually like really, really it's talent, right? So the progressive, now what is going to happen if you look at this? All over the world, there's an economist called Richard Florida who has mapped migration. And he says, you know, talent migrates to inclusive spaces. It's very clear. In America, you know, all the queers, all the talent will go to New York, will go to San Francisco, right? And so you have a center, which is where a lot of the smart people are on the coast because the coasts are more liberal, more accepting. They're seeing that happening in India as well. Queer people will gravitate towards a Bangalore, uh, which might be more liberal, will gravitate towards more queer friendly places, right? And then what will happen to the states which are not encouraging, right? They will lose talent, you know, their GDP will go down, they will uh, fall on every economic indicator. So I think progressive states in India are recognizing that. Progressive companies are recognizing that. Even in politics, we said earlier, right? Progressive political parties are recognizing that we need, this is the future voting bloc. How do we tap into them now? So what you're saying, again, this is a Sindhi in you, and I totally admire that part. What you're saying is that if nothing else, understand the economy of, of the world. Completely. And economics dictates that you be nice and inclusive so that everybody grows and, you know, uh, kumbaya hold hands and we all uh, rise together. I'll give but, you a number. I'll give you a number from the book. Yeah. The size of India's queer economy is two hundred billion dollars with a B. But how how would you get that? How can you how would you get that figure? I didn't get that. Uh, there was a uh, there are economists who did it. There was a Vodafone out now consulting uh, you know survey, and all those numbers I cite in the book are from World Bank, McKinsey, Boston Consulting Group, very reputed international global numbers. Thank God, uh, my podcast is not popular. Otherwise, parents would be telling their kids right now as we speak, homosexual ban jao, 200 billion opportunity house man. Correct. Can you imagine? So the World Bank calculated in 2016 that the cost of homophobia, which means actively, and Lee Badgett, the economist who wrote that World Bank report has done a blurb for this book. 
the cost of homophobia in India is conserved. It will be thirty-two billion dollars with a B. Wow! Which means if you are not homophobic, you are going to make thirty-two billion dollars more, right? So right. now, who wants a piece? Thirty-two billion dollars in twenty sixteen was about one percent of our GDP. So any political party or any economist, any business person who wants to improve our economy, just stop being homophobic. We'll go up by a couple of percentage in GDP. Everyone will do well. Um, it's a no-brainer. I mean, this is not just a Sindhi me. This is just a. I mean, you know, I just don't understand why people are not getting this. No, but it appeals to the Indian mind. Not to be racist, but the Indian mind likes logic like that. Sometimes yeah. so, straightforward. Unnis bees. Is me kya hai? Kya milega? Natija kya hai? I think that's a very important uh, thing for the Indian mind, and I have no problem with that to push agendas along. Sometimes I think human beings just re- respond to the clinical. reality of life and situations because forget the morality we've given up on that because people are just the way they are yeah. like i said at the beginning we all have yeah. some problems yeah. you know everyone may not be i mean you're used to people who are uh, you know sexually uh, offensive and all that but then i think on a daily basis everybody hates everything about everybody else it's just you know you know so fikki fikki uh, yeah, yeah. consulting group and open for business um they did a report last year which i wrote mm-hmm. the forward of and they looked at some of the smartest companies all over the world including in countries which were non lgbtq friendly and these were companies who were speaking up for lgbtq rights they found that even in speaking up for lgbtq rights in non friendly countries it doesn't affect the reputation or profit or whatever of those companies in fact even there your innovation uh, output increases so literally if there's one message anyone who's listening to this wants to take away besides your anger at Mumbai, at mumbai traffic in south bombay it is that being inclusive has zero there's like zero uh, side effects it's only positive for you there's nothing negative about it so, man ki shanti but uh, is parmesh shahani uh, do you laugh at yourself about all these things and all uh, i mean what do you how did you deal with everything did you, did you did you just laugh to yourself sometimes that people are ridiculous what uh, uh, if you ask you personally I eat two pieces of dark chocolate every night. That helps. It's good for the heart, very, apparently. Yeah, it's very good for the heart. I have a very good therapist. Um, if I don't laugh at myself, my my partner laughs at me a lot. That really helps. He laughs at me for everything. You know, he says he does it to bring me down a peg or two. Um, but I think it's mostly because he's kind of uh, sadistic and I'm uh, <laughs> masochistic. You sound like you're dating a heterosexual. <laughs> right, completely. God, is know, he in the same line? Is is he also a corporate guy? He is. Um, he is a scientist. Oh wow! Uh, he works in an R and D lab. He's a trained pharmacist, but he's been working through the lockdown because what he does is essential services. So he's been doing R and D in a lab through the lockdown. What are his views on the so-called vaccine? He is hoping as well that it comes out. As in, I mean, date-wise, like any idea? No one knows. I think no, no one, one can tell. No, no one, one can tell. No See, one that's the beauty about the disease, now. Then nobody cares whether you're straight or gay or whatever. Everybody wants a bloody vaccine. <laughs> However, the situation uh, turns out later on in the year. But uh, let's before we go into the EMAs, uh, anything more on Kyrgyzstan that we we should look forward to? The uh, the two things which are clear is both the non-homosexual or LGBTQ person. as well as a person who uh, identifies with any of these groups should read this book am i right to say that completely and every parent anyone who's interested in the future of india certainly every college professor college student etc right because the whole point is um while the book is set in business um it's really about what you said earlier it's about how do you be a nurturing parent how do you be a nurturing corporate and i think both these are connected so anyone who actually wants to imagine a better tomorrow and be inspired by the change that's happening all around us i think should read it um i promise you it's not boring and it's it's um, i've written it as a full the book starts with hema malini so it's from hema malini to homi baba and everything in between that's the wow time. hema malini was your uh, go to girl is it madonna and hema malini were your two favorites Good so one. i you know without giving too much away everyone in the you know a lot of my queer friends have a shri devi versus rekha debate and i'm like very angry i'm like what about hema malini you know because people kind of ignore her and to me hema is like the ultimate so this i'm you know i start the book with hema malini just to kind of you know say hey there are other divas too wow uh between you and me i'm a big rekha fan yeah you me know. too but you know you she was the most beautiful woman of my time growing up and it would be rekha but anyway subjective yeah, i don't want to lecture I'm from you now i'm talking about i'm talking about hema malini 
you know, from a Shole, see, not Hema okay, Mali. From yeah, Hema but I, we've seen all that. And, and yeah, Hema, 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 Hema Mali is not a queer icon. The, you know, I'm talking about the right, main. Right. My God, there's so many films. There's no end to that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. Listen, Parmesh, it's been great talking to you. The book is called Queeristan. Please stay there while my lovely Saluki, whose sexuality is not determined yet, is barking in the background. I apologize. Um, let's do the AMAs. Will you stay with us for a few minutes? Yeah. The AMAs Perfect. will happen in a second. Over to you, Silvery. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another amazing week on the IVM Podcast Network. If you're not following us on social media, please do. We're IVM Podcast on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. So another really fun week on the network. I don't know if you saw this, but Varun Thakur was on Advertising is Dead. That was a really, really fun episode. Besides that, we've had some great guests all over the place. We had Ram Madhwani on Cyrus Says. We had Saurabh Mukherjee, a legend in the finance space. He was on Pesa Vesa. He and Anupam have quoted in a book, so definitely do check out that episode and go buy their book too. I mean, like that would be another great thing to do. Uncle Pleasant had a really, really cool episode with hosts of our other show, Mr. and Mrs. Binge Watch, Anirudh and Janice. They we were talking about celebrity culture and how that's progressed for the last few years and yeah it's just been a really really great week one episode i do want to shout out a couple of weeks ago pulia bazi did an episode which was just amazing they were talking about the uh, letters between mahatma gandhi and rabindranath tagore do check those out those are really good but with that let me get you back to your show follow me at instagram and twitter on board brocha I'm so bored. I need your help. I need your love. I need your touch. Okay, just, just, just follow me. All right. Hey, guys. Uh, the first question comes in from Payal Chaudhary. She asks, uh, hey, Cyrus and dear guest, huge fan of the show. I'm a working professional here working in tech solutions. My question is this. They say corporate greed never ends. I'm about to ask for a raise, even though my company has not been paying us for the last few months of the lockdown. However, Oops. they've been hiring new people to increase productivity. So there's definitely money to be spent. How can I ask my boss for a raise without seeming like a jerk? I feel like I'm underpaid right now as it is. Also, was there ever a time when you felt you deserved more but settled for way less? <laughs> but uh, I don't get... I, one second. So they're hiring people but they're not paying them a salaries or not paying them a, a raise? They're two different things. She says that they're not being... They're not paying us for the last few months of the lockdown is what she said. Oh, I don't so know that, what that that's means. terrible. It could mean no, that they're so, not paying the salary at all. Yeah, so yeah. not paying the salary at all is like terrible. Not paying the raise is debatable. So that's the first thing. Now, going back to my life, I've been underpaid yeah, all the true. time. I've suffered so much. I've, my work has been like an NGO. Wherever I've gone, I've just done it for public acclaim and to help poor people have better lives who have never watched anything I've done. Um, but who, who the hell is going to say I got overpaid? Maybe I, 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 a couple of heavyweight boxing fights that I can think of with 100 million was perhaps too much for six minutes. Like... Some actors can say definitely that they got overpaid. No, they won't. They, they won't, won't say themselves. They won't, they won't say it. That's true. See, say I'll, I'll tell you, Silvery, <laughs> I'll, I'll be an advocate for the... Uh, Parvish, uh, if, uh, just tell me if you agree with my philosophy. Acting is a very flexible profession, right? Yeah. If the guy gets 100 crores for one film, there's also a chance two years from now he'll have no work. So, unlike yeah. most, uh, you know, the places where you, you, you go for 30 years, 40 years, and you generally get a little better, uh, have a peak period towards the end of your career... Uh, I'm okay with that. You know, sports people, actors, that kind of thing. They're going to make the hay while the sun shines. Parmesh, yeah. your views, yeah. please. Thank you. Um, I completely agree. I think everyone should be paid the maximum that they can be paid. Um, I think but it's beyond the salary, right? I mean, and for me, it's are you paying people good money but treating them badly? Or are you having great benefits? Are you welcoming their spouses? Are you, um, you know, so for me, it's the money, but it's everything else. Um, that also and you know which is why um, last year I got an incredible job offer which was paying me more than two times my salary at Goldman. What are you saying? And I said no because I went and told Lisa about it. Of like, course you should have shown her the offer if it was in text or email. Huh? No, no, no. So I told her she said are you taking it? Then I said no. Huh. She, was like, she was like okay then don't ask me for a raise. Now you've said no and no, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> tell you it's so hard to deal with Parsis. <laughs> you know? So why why would you this choose? Is she's running the company it, so, well. so you chose you chose to stay back in Godrej only because you love the, the community. Because I because you know it's uh, I'm comfortable, I'm happy. My I love my colleagues, they respect me. They write a note to my partner when we go for like corporate events. I mean, I think a lot of, of you know, of course one works for money, but one also really works for respect, kindness. Um, a sense that you are in a way 
adding to create a better company society world i mean i work for all of those things as well so i work for uh, low hanging fruit i just want the watchman to not think of me as a failure when i leave the sounds, house you know that sounds very raunchy when you say you work <laughs> <laughs> my god hey, your sex dreams and mine are not meeting i have had no watchman in my dreams for years they're the bane of my existence Yeah, all right. So that's that's a big deal. Huh? Uh, twice the salary. So let's say one crore becomes two, and you say no. That's a lot. That's a lot. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I could have done that. Silvi, would you have said no to double? No, double to never. Double is okay, a how do you thing. say no? Yeah. मैं तो एक तो गाली तो एक तो गाली खा सकते हैं. What is there? I'm thinking. You're paying me for your boss. Huh? I mean, if it was four times, I would have considered it. <laughs> <laughs> Every man has. There is price. a price. There is a price. Yes, there has to be. Uh, yeah. uh, like just to address one of our questions, one of Pyle's yeah. questions, he says, uh, "How can I ask my boss for a raise without seeming like a jerk?" My father always says this, and I always go back to the. My father always says that never fear to negotiate, but never negotiate out of fear. Like I think this is a quote he read in in a book that he really loves. No, no, he wrote it himself. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Uh, uh so i think that applies uh, that you should like if both parties don't negotiate at least one party is always left unsatisfied also so, there's no self respect if you don't do that you know yeah, it's like correct. you're not correct. respecting yourself i mean you can watch the i don't see the harm of course very often yeah. when you do that as what happened with uh, parmesh just now is uh, they think it's a leverage you know when you're trying to discuss some other job and all that in yeah. his case it wasn't But in many cases, people would have used it as a leverage. So I was surprised he didn't, and he disappointed me in that moment. I really liked Parmesh throughout the program till the time when he had that leverage and he let it go. <laughs> Very disappointing. Hmm. This is why I'm I'm a Sindhi working in a company. And You're not a Sindhi. Give back your Sindhi card. I've grown up with Sindhis. I know what Sindhis are like. One of my closest friends is Sindhi. He would he throw up if I tell him this story. What double? He didn't negotiate. <laughs> you should have got triple and stayed with Godrej. That's the Sindhi story. I'm going to just send this clipping of the podcast to my bosses. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And again, tell them no, 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 just to show you. <laughs> it's not me. It's not me. You know, Cyrus is here. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure you got a lot of flack from your close uh, supporters and friends uh, on that story. No. Okay. Yeah. I mean, but but I think to answer the you know the the person who's asked this question, I think you know our circumstances of the lockdown are such that it's very difficult to negotiate in these Correct. circumstances. Yeah. So I would say. express yourself really honestly um and say you know this i feel like whatever you know certainly you should be paid your salary every month uh but i don't think beyond expressing yourself honestly at this point uh, where people are trying to keep jobs because yeah. many entrepreneurs are thinking look i can't afford to keep you because you know you've yeah. taken a beating for 5 months so yeah. in that sense i think you might be a little too cocky to go up to somebody in uh, after 5 months of no real yeah. commerce timing, coming in i think yeah the timing in terms of it is whatever but you should certainly have that honest conversation with your you know with with, with yeah. your boss and talk about at least being paid every month on time uh, right. you know and, and talk about to, it at a to use a like a metaphor it would be like billion woman taking part in the mr india today at age 55 they might still win actually is in pretty good shape yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah is he one of those guys who's just uh, survived everybody parvesh he's also like you know every person like every person i meet straight or gay male or you know female or find him good looking yeah he's like everyone's dream boat it's just amazing i'll tell you that when when i started with mtv for many years he was always the guy when we did college events so his name would come up as uh, oh you think you are as good looking as milan sumana he was he was the standard he But kept that for many years i guess in his i like because you know i have met him and you know when he looks at you you know it, you know he milan the straight but yeah. he looks at you with such it's not just lust it's just such clarity he's like, very comfortable with himself yeah, yeah yeah you know and it's just that i think it's just that that makes everyone see you're talking about him i'm already like Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i didn't want that effect and and if if you want to take your dream a little further you and i used to swim together okay that'll spoil your dream uh, <laughs> he used to swim he used, he used to swim in a speedo uh, so i was what a few years younger than him but we used to train at the at the ymca in baikala and so we used to pick and drop him my mom and the ambassador with the big gears i'll never forget and, so uh, lucky you yeah. Okay. Well, I I had my speedos myself, so lucky him. <laughs> How's that, Parmesh? Huh? Huh? One man's meat, another man's Chinese buffet. Not allowed by the yes. government. <laughs> as long as you have the chopsticks. I, well, that time the chopsticks were working. I can tell you that. And if, I don't know if you remember the late eighties and that period. Everyone wore those speedos. There was no. In fact, the Indian version was called Speedy, 
which is a cheap version which should tear there was yeah. no other way of so males were horrible you know my poor father and you know all these guys with big stomachs they all had speedos so it was just not a place to go to i don't know how you turn gay at a time like that growing up i mean like it was horrible really god i wish i could make a documentary on all the relatives in their speedos you know you got to see parsi families <laughs> letting it all hang out oof ha uh, we scared away the young one silvery come back no no we want right. to see the visuals uh moving on to the next question uh this one's coming from komal thakur uh she asks hello cyrus and guest uh cyrus i know your lockdown has been very frustrating for you but mine Three. has been really great wow i've been getting up at 2 in the afternoon sleeping late doing office work when i feel like over the day eating what i want letting the hair grow everywhere showering once in two days uh, i'm loving all of this i feel like we've all needed this to some extent for years and now the universe is finally giving us the break we desperately needed my question is i stay with my parents and my lockdown lifestyle has completely made them question my hygiene and sanity i try to make them understand that it's the lockdown and what else is there to do but embrace our current situation but they don't get it i want to know Why can't I have just a month or two of being a complete mess? Wouldn't it be great if we could all be a mess for one month every year without judgments? What do you guys? Yeah, think? but but that is why the Western world discovered what is called studio apartments. So you can, <laughs> you, for example, permit your sexuality. Yeah. He doesn't have to discuss it with anybody. He gets his studio apartment. He's he's himself. Uh, I, Komal, I hope is a male, but it could be female. But yeah. uh, Komal, I totally empathize with Komal because I like everything to hang out. I hate having baths. I mean, I have one minute showers, but I hate you know. I just like to wear the same clothes and let the just let it be. You just express yourself by doing nothing sometimes. So I'm all for that. But how to live together with everybody? Because everybody is judgmental. The human yeah. beings. It's you know, Silvery. You also with the family. I I, I my wife saying now my daughter is thirteen. You to wear pants and walk around. <laughs> I'm like, why? What difference does it make? Uh, Yeah. Not that I'm new. Yeah. I wear the underwear. Huh? Yeah. Just to clarify, before the police come knocking on my door. Huh? <laughs> Cyrus, I completely disagree with you here. Very oh, here's here's the beating. At the end of the show, the beating has started. Uh, go on, sir. Uh, it's because I think while of course we owe a lot to ourselves um, to be wild and free, and you know, quote, let the hair grow everywhere, as Komal says, end quote. I think we also have a responsibility. aesthetic responsibility um a hygiene responsibility to the people that we live with right so i think yeah. out of respect and kindness to the people that live around you i think you owe it to yourself to shower every day yeah. do some basic grooming and be fabulous because See what <laughs> no one saying you wrong but but no one saying you wrong because of the community issue but my point is that we are slaves to convention all the time commerce hit the nail on the one part of the head at least which is that now i've got a little freedom to just express myself in a reverse manner which is to yeah. not express myself i don't have to dress up i don't have to wash up i don't have to have my hair fall in place i i, I look i'm I, after some time it looked like and you're like a hermit or whatever so i understand but for a little while as komal has said it's not a bad thing to just do that it's therapeutic i suppose it's a little bit stress Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay, I'll tell you. I, I'm a self-confessed nudist. Okay, I like to be naked as much as I can. It's yeah. not a sexual thing. I just hate clothes. I've never understood why. You know, I don't even like to wear glasses. I wish they could give us something which you could just, you just, you know, be really small on your nail or something. You could see through it. I just hate. I hate bangles. I hate anything on me. But uh, I live in a world in this South Mumbai country of mine where everybody wants to buy fancy stuff, and I, I got no one to empathize and with. And a house with lots of windows. The house with lots of windows. The Davans always looking in. You know, nobody leaves thanks to lockdown. Yeah, and and a wife who is not supportive. She says you're a fat, ugly, middle-aged man. You should be not only clothed, you should be locked up. She sounds yeah. like my. She sounds like my husband. I think we should get them together. <laughs> you, you, I think my wife is a little bit more manly than any man I've met. So you have to be a little careful. I don't want to lose her to anybody. Uh, yeah. Oh God, I hope she doesn't hear this. Oh. Uh, this person sounds like uh, they've gone back to their uh, summer vacation kind of mentality. Maybe no, look at it this way, se- Silvery. When you finish school and you have uniform and classes yeah. and all, most yeah. of us in that first year of college, I don't know this generation, but up to my generation, uh, and I'm sure uh, Parmesh totally remembers all that. First year of college, you just don't want rules. You let the hair grow. You wear whatever shirt you want. You, you know, I mean, uh, you wear purple pants and all that. Not necessarily because you're this sexuality, that sexuality. It's just yeah. a way of expressing yourself. Like it's a, like this is sort of a rebellion in a reverse way, where you're like, I don't want to do anything. I just want it all to, you know. And for a little while, I'm saying it's okay. After that, it's a rut. You've gone bizarre. For a little lost. while, uh, uh, I agree. For a little while, but then um, you know, 
grooming okay. then it's a negativity uh, to it there's a negative it's a negative statement it's like i don't believe in life i've lost can, interest in hope yeah. you can see that you can use it, you know, it to increase family bonds like you know my partner and me cut each other's hair and it's kind of romantic at that moment that's only you and your partner okay that's one thing think about the family bonds you talk about is people who are once removed then that's irritating you have seven eight people in the family you really come in each other's way you can sit on the floor they can surround you it can be um, you can you can instagram live it uh you really the, now let me tell you the reality the reality is while you're on somebody shouting shut up i can't hear someone move out of the way i can't, you know that's what really happens it's just too many people in too little space yeah. the love's gone out of the window in march and yeah. i blame the politicians they should have never mentioned covid people would have you know been sick or whatever no one would have known and we just gone with it why didn't the world think this through okay we've lost parmesh permission. permission shot himself he, he said it's one thing growing up gay in a stray strange country like india but i can't take this podcast this has been the worst moment of his life he's taken his own book where is star and he's banging it on his head as we speak <laughs> then, i was i was time. remembering i was remembering the last time we were on stage i was at tara deshpande's book launch you remember yes yes right my god was it was quite a while back yeah Oof. was I as i was better behaved then i'm sure you read so wonderfully and like I, everyone was like what is wrong with cyrus Oh, yeah. <laughs> you were really so polite when, when you right? set low standards you just cannot be good ever it's pointless <laughs> you disappoint so many people oh what can i tell you yeah. parvesh uh, thank you so much uh, for the book for your life and I please agree. come back and talk us through more interesting anecdotes survival kits not just yeah. for one uh, uh, sexual stereotype but for all Correct. because we are supposedly all god's children Yes. <laughs> Not true. I was adopted for sure. Well, All right. Loves you too. So we'll find out one day, brother. We'll find out one day. Find out one day. Yeah. Yeah. My worry is hell will be exactly where I am right now. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye. See you Thank soon, buddy. Bye. Bye. Okay, catch us on any of the podcasting apps, please. We beg you, we need you. Send us your questions on Twitter on Cyrus Says In, or you can email us, even if you're not female, on what Cyrus Says at Gmail dot com. Are you constantly seeking happiness, wondering how to make the most of every day, how not to let your inhibitions stop you from achieving your goals? It's now time to get your A game on. It's time to unlock your true potential. Tune in to the empowering series with me Zarina Poonawala to feel empowered in all genres of life. From behavioral skills to management skills, from health to relationships, from mental well-being to emotional well-being, and of course your finances. I've got you covered with these tips and tricks from me Zarina and true life stories from my amazing guests. You're bound to bring your purest to the table. Tune in to the empowering series with Zarina Punawala every Thursday on the IVM Podcast app, website, or wherever you listen to podcasts. How many times have you motivated yourself to improve your sleep, or lose weight, or be more productive? How many times have you failed? Hi, my name is Ashtin Doctor. Tune into my show The Habit Coach podcast where we focus on creating small tiny habits to improve your life instead of those big impossible tasks. So make listening to me a habit every Monday, Wednesday and Friday on the IVM podcast app or ivmpodcast.com or on your favorite podcasting app.